So let me get, uh, we got some people, some guests here on the security side, as well as our luminaries. If you want to come up, we're going to talk a little bit about security and selling security. Thank you, sir. Have a seat. Uh, let's start off with some introductions. Uh, tell us a bit about you, your company, and, and, and how you're attacking the, the opportunity that is security. You want to kick us off? Sure. Uh, I'm Brian Doty. I'm a new trend to MSP. I'm a former development manager on the team there. Um, so we're the best kept secret in the MSP space for backup. And you know, our you know, claim to fame maybe comes from the enterprise space. Uh, and we learned a lot about building disaster recovery plans. And that's something that I'm very passionate about, making sure that you have a plan in place for each of your clients so that you know exactly what to do and that you know what hits the fan. Um, you have an answer, you have in place the steps that you're going to take to recover their data for them and you know go on with life. It's not the best day uh, for you as an MSP when one of your clients gets it, but it should be well planned out. Yeah. I think backups is a hugely important thing because it's the last line of defense. That's all you got at the end of the day. The one thing you know is that the backups are there. That's your fail safe. Cool. Chad? No, um, I'm Chad Hall. I'm the Chief Security Officer at Security Solutions. Um, I'm way more knowledgeable. Of that twenty-five thousand recurring you added, what what percentage of that's profit? What's your profit margin on it? That's not bad. Yeah. So you're adding about nineteen, eighteen grand in profit every every month. That's not bad for six weeks of work, even on your standards. Okay. All right. All right.
a show of hands, how, what, what, how many people are, feel very confident in their current security offering and have no concern that they're missing the boat? About 25% are, are very confident. That's great, okay. I mean, the rest of us, this is, to me, I think this is probably the best place to figure that out. The, the vendor community out there, including Unitrends, they kind of, you could just scan 10 vendors in 15 minutes and then start building your solution stack. And then they also have, I'm sure, a lot of aggressive promotions. But I, th I think what you'll hear is that while not everyone is an MSSP, everyone is more of an SSF, MSSP than they ever were before, and they have to be to be an MSP. I think if you risk not having that conversation, you, you risk having one of these two gentlemen come in here and swipe your customers away, and, and rightfully so. If you're not having that conversation, you're not doing right by the client. Yeah, to that point and what Terry has had said in the last session before we got up here is it's about, you do need to have the offering even if it's not something you're fulfilling directly, right? Now, part, pick the right partner for you, find the right thing for your customers, but have something because it's a gaping hole regardless, and you may as well be the one to bring it to the table. What's your solution stacks look like now? Uh, it's, it's blended and it's vast. So, I mean, for, for us, security is a spectrum, right? And every customer is willing and wanting to go somewhere on the evolution between where they are and where they should be. And some of them will do it all in one swap, some won't. So uh, we have everything from, from Sentinel-1 to uh, Threat Locker to um, a full, the full Barracuda suite as far as email security goes. Uh, we're an Arctic Wolf partner for for MDR and, and some of the other SOC components. So, I mean, there's, there's basically a quiver in that, or an arrow in that quiver for however and, and wherever uh, the right solution is for the customer. One thing I was gonna add, um, every single one of those vendors slash partners that he just mentioned will help you sell it, right? Um, most all of them are willing to hop on the phone with you and demo their product. Um, and, and re really, you, you are just the, the avenue to sell it. Um, for us, we, we utilize vigilance as part of Sentinel One, so it's their sock. Um, and so, so again, they, they, will di they will do everything for you, and all you got to do is collect the check and, and just be there to, to help guide and direct. And, and you mentioned one thing a second ago, and this is non security related, but you mentioned like print management. Um, Terry, you mentioned phones. Um, I encourage you or urge you to find different partnerships um, with companies that you trust that don't have the things maybe in your skill set or wheelhouse. Um, we, we don't do phones, right? So we partner with a local company that happens to be very good at it, and, and they're, they're local in the Carolinas, and all we do is introduce, and then we just collect a monthly commission from them. And most partners, you know, again, find somebody you trust, uh, they, they don't do managed services or anything that we do, so it works nicely. Um, but but find somebody you trust, and again, turn that into to revenue for your business. So, I think it's one of the key points about this is you don't have to do anything to do to offer this service. Right. You can offer someone else's software, someone else's sock, someone else's print services, someone else's website development, and yeah. just add profit to your business. It, it, it is almost software as a service. Once you start adding every single one of the you know vendors slash partners to your security stack it is almost software as a service and just to add to that because i had some experience as an msp myself and the msp i worked for didn't have a security stack when i started there so it was part of my goal to build that out in that in a very quick amount of time and then go bring it to market and you know the vendors will talk to you, and now being on this side of the fence, we'll help you, right? And, and all most vendors in the channel are very good with this, and not to toot our own horn, but we have a thing called Powered Services where we help you sell it. We'll, in fact, get people on the phone to act as subject matter experts. We'll help you do webinars. So to your point, Terry, about you know, use your vendors to your advantage. They have resources, um, and it's, it's not just, my company, it's a lot of the companies that you're already working with. So talk to your account managers, get them to do some work for you, make them earn that commission check, right? They're always calling you up for another demo to sell you something, make them work for it, right? We had a healthy debate yesterday, or at least I tried to facilitate one, about the benefits of integration or the co cost of integration when it comes to backups. Um, how, does, how do backups 
relate to security? I feel like it's a little bit of the backup plan, but is it, is it actually a primary strategy? And should people have their backups integrated with their PSA and RMM? Yeah, so I was on the yes side of that debate. Um, I think that integration provides efficiency, right? And it's going to help you kind of alleviate some of that going from tool to tool to tool and logging into different things, especially now that we're using multi-factor authentication, or we should be at least using multi-factor authentication. So there's some steps there that's going to take tech time. Um, but the fact that these tools work together and talk together, I think, pr provides some efficiencies that outweigh sort of the risk associated with that. So that, that was my take on things there. So the, the debate was all around, with all the pressure on the R PSA and RMM, are the attackers seeing that as a, as a Trojan horse? So they can get in there, they can get anything, control everything. Should the backups be completely separate, logically, physically separate, from the RMM and the PSA because of that vulnerability. I thought it was an interesting conversation. Um, and and uh, I don't know, you, what, do, are yours integrated or are they separate? I don't believe ours are integrated and, and uh, we use ConnectWise and, and, and we're, we're a big data shop, but I, I don't believe any of the backups and all are integrated with, with our ConnectWise tools. Not integrated? Okay, yeah. interesting. I remember it wasn't long ago when everything had to be integrated. Like that was the mission because nickels are rubbing nickels together is how MSPs make money. So those integrations were our profit. All right. Um, any questions for the panel here? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would, uh, again, encourage you to partner with as many insurance agents that you can that offer cyber security. Um, we were talking about this last night, um, and I believe, Ron, you, you've got some that you've partnered with, right? Um, and, and it's true. They, they're requiring, you know, MFA. They're, require, they're requiring all these things in order to take out a cyber security insurance policy. So, um, so the short answer is yes, we are hearing the same things. And again, I, I encourage you to partner with anybody you can because, I mean, that's just free business because they, they can't get the policy without having it, right? So. It, it also opens up a, a completely new market that wouldn't have otherwise talked to an MSP to begin with, right? Because uh, a lot of folks, like I would say in the last six to eight months or so, co-managed has been one of the largest vectors uh, of our growth as, as ever because everything's tribal, right? And it was always a conflict of interest from an internal guy to ever want to bring in the enemy. We were the Trojan horse in that regard because we were there to take their job. Now we can run Overwatch with them. It's perfectly fine. We can deliver the tools. Uh, the conversations are starting and then they're coming to us. Cyber insurance is really driving it uh, mostly at this point. The other side to that is, um, I mean, the premiums suck, right? And, but they know that they got to pay them. So when something changes, it's like a document that actually had teeth for once. I usually laugh about more of like the HIPAA side of things, right? I mean, anyone on that side of it, you can pencil whip the documentation because that's what they do. It's what they think that is necessary or that's okay um, because it's in a binder somewhere, it's okay. But it, until it isn't, right? And now it's not. So I think much like anything else in the world, if we watch the direction that the insurance agencies are going, we're gonna be 18 months in front of where the industry actually is going to be because First goes insurance, then goes regulation and litigation, or uh, uh, legislation, excuse me, and then just be out in front of it. But we're seeing the exact same thing. What are you telling the, I, I, I love this idea, going after the big customers who, who have the same issue that a lot of little MSPs do, yeah. right? They don't know it, they don't understand security, this is, this is a weakness for them. What are you saying to make them feel comfortable enough to let you in there just to provide the security side? Well, it's, it's sort of, uh, and similar to Chad and I's acquisition strategy for net new customers is we don't, we don't judge opportunities before they land at our table. We go in and have a conversation first and we'll find where the actual opportunity fits. We don't constrict Marketopia on what leads they can give us is a shorter way of saying that. Um, specific then to trying to lead into co-managed opportunities, 
don't try to take more than they're willing to ask for at the moment, right? Just use it as the opportunity to get in there because once you are the partner, all the other opportunity is going to come to you as well. Um, similarly to how the, the strategy of, you know, do you make everyone forklift their environment to be pretty and perfect on your stack from day one, or do you earn, your, earn the opportunity to get all of that business by taking them in a supportable fashion and working them there over 12 months? Similar concept, but that's how we're working it at least, is we take what we can get, we're there to be their hero, not their enemy. For the most part, the way that our business in the Midwest works anyway is it's event-driven, so we, we get people, this is the second phase of the sales cycle that Terry talked about earlier for us, is we just need to get, we need to be known, we need to get a proposal on their desk and the phone will ring within 18 months. Something's gonna happen, the internal guy's gonna quit or get fired, the internal company's gonna make a mistake, or a CFO's gonna change and wanna make an impact by making some sort of cost-cutting decision. So if we can get our name in the hat, we just wait to get pulled. How do you, how do you, um, you, 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 you kind of started this whole thing just going after the big customers, selling them security, and that's it. That's, sometimes that's all you're selling them. How, yeah. What do you say to make them feel comfortable? I, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know that I say one thing that makes them feel comfortable over anything else. Um, I just know that we made the decision not to be the all or nothing MSP, right? And, you know, there are a lot of managed service providers that say you either give me everything or I don't want any of it. Um, and, and, and again, we made the decision a couple of years ago not to do that, right or wrong. You know, we, we can talk about that later. Um, but a lot of the companies that we're dealing with, they don't have a CISO. They don't have anybody that knows security. Um, so in order to, to save their job or, or we go into it and say, position it, hey, let, let me help you look better, right? Let me arm you with the information you need around security to talk to your CEO, CFO, COO, um, and, and it worked. they have to have it. I mean, there's no, you know, there's no waiting. They, they have to have it. Um, and, and they don't know enough about it to, to go out and do it on their own, so. Are those pro are clients co profitable? I mean, these the customers are just coming in selling just one thing. Is it kind of so hands off that it's just like printing money or is it a high maintenance kind of sale? Well, I mean, like you said, if, if I buy an agent for $3.50 and I sell it for 20, I'd, I'd say that's pretty profitable, right? I mean, you know, it's printing money. I mean, if, if you sell enough of those, you, you know, you, you'll be sitting pretty. Very cool. Not to put you on the spot, but obviously Unitrends offers a key part of the strategy when it comes to the last line of defense, sort of the, the oh, crap, we lost everything. Pause you for a second. I think you had a question. Oh. No, I mean, again, I don't mind having things out there that, that lead to future calls because, again, I look at it as a future opportunity to sell something into that customer that I'm not doing already. So, yeah. So, sorry, Terry, I didn't mean to No, no, I, I think you're, you're honest on that. You know, th there's a debate, guys, between the bundle, super bundle, quadruple bundle, the $250, $350, $1,000 bundle, some of these talking heads are out there sort of getting attention by talking about the $500 bundle. And then there's the reality, which is that no one's selling it. You know, they're just talking about it because it sounds great and it is great. If you want to run a lifestyle business and close your relatives, your close friends and their friends, you probably could build a, a business on that. But there's not a lot of people that are going out there with all or nothing, $350 a seat and knocking doors down. And, and we can tell you because we see it. They, they get the leads, they'll walk in the door, they just don't walk out with a signed contract because one of these kids will sell them what they want to buy, sell them what they really, really, really need, and then come back later and cross sell and upsell and, and get the rest. So it's a common thing, honestly, it's a big thing. And it's been, I think security has made the bundles even bigger. That's how people got to 300 and 350 and they're bundling in kids and diapers and all sorts of stuff in those packages. just happens to allow us to land much easier now right I mean because um, not every not even every MSP understands security or has taken the time to to learn what's out there and and you know whether it be a new product or new partner or a new regulation you know they, they haven't taken the time so um, 
and, and going back to even the sales cycle earlier in the day, when you're doing a technology assessment or a business assessment or whatnot, and, the, and then you're poking holes in the, the incumbent's um, security plan, I, I, again, I'm, th this is the easiest way that I've found in all the years that I've been selling services and in IT, this, this is the easiest thing I've been able to find to get into the door and, and sell something, day one. Com I'm, Tim can attest, there have been times that I haven't even been able to finish my sentence and they're like, just, just go in and put it on there. Just, just sign me up, no questions asked. I mean, a lot of people are scared. Yeah. I mean, it's real, it's their job too, yeah. Employee size? Yeah, yeah. Uh, for, from a managed services standpoint, or just in, we'll just make it easy. Um, probably 20 to 100. Um, you know, we've got a few that are, are below that, um, and we've got several that are above that. But that, it, it, what I've found, that's the sweet spot for managed service providers, anyways. Because typically, when you get into the larger clients, they have a huge staff. But then, then you start looking at how can we help co-manage or what can we add that they don't offer, right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, that, that 20 to 100, I mean, it's, it just seems to be the sweet spot because there, there's always something missing. Um, they're, they're not perfect. And so you just got to find what, what they're missing and, and see, seize that opportunity. Yeah. But but that's no, that's what the hackers are hoping, right? That's what the folks are hoping that are generating these viruses and, and whatnot. They're hoping that you have that mentality. But but even as small as that customer may be, or even think your own company, right? Your data is still important. It's important to you. Um, you just got to figure out how much is it worth to you or to the customer. Um, but it, it's definitely worth something. If, if, if you go to that customer and you say, okay, you're so small and nobody cares about your data, let me take it all tomorrow. Let me, let me have it. Right. Then, what's it worth? then what's it worth to you? There's a, there's a lot of opportunity now to, for customers, current customers, rather than prospects. You can still do it with prospects too, but there are really nice discovery tools that can show them otherwise as far as what already exists or where their actual vulnerability or their, their actual risk lies. And, and those have come along in the last 18 months too, significantly better than they ever used to be. Uh, so it's, it's easy with relatively low drag or low time investment to walk in armed to those conversations yeah. because that's exactly right. They don't think it is because it never has been, even though it always has been. But if you can deliver the documentation that helps open the conversation to expand it into the realm that they already sort of just assumed you were taken care of, wrongfully so, but it's true, um, you're sort of playing offense to the defense of that situation as well to then counter the, the, the miss. Uh, the assumption that you were already taking care is, of it. Is that like dark web ID agent type? There's a handful. I mean, I, depending I, on. I go in and say, you know, I, I literally show, recommend showing them those reports. I think ID agent yeah. and their competitors are really powerful and ways to diffuse that. Right. And I, I literally say they may already be in. Yeah. And You don't and, think you're vulnerable? Here it is on the dark web. They may already have been here and yeah. taken all your stuff. You know what I mean? Like you're, you can show them the report. Most, yeah. most of these tools aren't going to cost you much to run. Um, and, and it goes back to what, what's the cost of the lead, what's the cost of the sale. I mean, I think anybody in this room would spend $20 for, for an, ID, uh, you know, an ID agent to run on, on one domain, find out all this information, and then go you know, sell a $2,000 month agreement. We would do that with our eyes closed all day. Yeah, and, and where and when you introduce those kinds of discovery tools in in the conversation goes back to earlier conversation too about our only ob ob objective is to earn the right to have that next conversation. So don't hold on to it till a proposal meeting. I mean, in our process, we're showing that basically before the discovery meeting because you can, right? I know what your email address is so I can scan your domain and I'm not gonna lead the, the first conversation with it, but it is gonna be a, an oh, by the way, this is just the beginning of what we ought to be talking about because 
first of all, you may not know about it, and second of all, you may not have a solution to prevent it or uh, be aware of it. started our journey on this earlier this year um, I mean obviously we've all heard about the colonial pipeline being hacked and solar winds and the nation's largest meat distributor everybody's heard about that um, we we had a customer that only bought hardware from us no matter how many times we talked to him about managed services security services great great folks never bought anything other than hardware and at Three o'clock in the morning on a Saturday, we get a phone call from them. There are 475 folks, 21 locations, and within seven minutes, they were down. The whole company was down. It was a million dollars a day that it was costing them. And it took us about three weeks to get the, speaking to downtime, uh, and, and, and we had engineers working around the clock, and it still took us about three weeks to get them back to normal with the help of Sentinel-1, which is what, you know, really sold us on, on partnering with Sentinel-1. But that's, that's, a, that's a great point. No, nobody ever thinks about the downtime or getting them back to normal. Um, and it was a pretty hefty bill that they got from us. It's hard to hide it. It makes it impossible to yeah. hide the fact that you have a problem. So yeah. everyone's going to know that you got hacked, and then they're going to start peeling off as that's fast right. as they can. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, the downtime is one thing, but you could be losing customers during that time too, yeah. and that's you know. That's Th this huge. was a the, this customer happened to be the, they're a dermatology solutions customer, and obviously they couldn't see patients, uh, so it, it was it was a mess. A million dollars a day is what they were losing, and they did that over the course of about three weeks. Yes, sir. No, but they bought Sentinel One from us. <laughs> Once we got them all back up and running, um, I, I I got a seat at the table real quick to talk security after that. When you start having these conversations with customers, I mean, everybody in their head, they're like, oh, they're only thinking about ransom, right? But you, you start talking to somebody, and they, they give you the, it's it's not going to happen to me. But then you start giving them other examples, and so like I have customers. Oh my gosh. You're probably right. It's a good point.
like even on the dark web, um, because you know ID Agent is one of the, our sister companies. One of the examples that you know we have a partner that comes up and talks about this example all the time. They went in with the dark web monitoring report. They go in, they go, look, you know, you have these credentials out. You go, well, Susie, she left five years ago, and they started asking questions. Well, what did Susie do? Well, you know, she did payroll and accounts, accounts payable and everything. It's okay. Well, what systems did she have access? Well, did she had access to our Wells Fargo account and some other things. And, oh, all right. Well, let's give it a try real quick. Yeah, those credentials were still active. There was a million dollars sitting in that bank account. He got the deal. Yeah. <laughs> right there. <coughs> yeah. I even made it. People always are like, oh, they have it. They're not there anymore. The computer. But on average, people use what eight, nine websites yeah. a day in their job, right? And we have very little. Any other thoughts or questions? Your money, Ron, it doesn't matter. <laughs> to me, I look at that money that I'm losing right there. It's not just yeah. them that's losing money, it's you losing money too. Yeah. Yeah. You know? You might be able to afford Terry Rossi's lifestyle if you Ooh. sold all this right here. Yeah, is that how you did it? Is that how you got there? All right. Cool. All right, guys, this is an incredible opportunity. Obviously, it's a big opportunity for all of us, it's a big responsibility for all of us, and I think it's going to become more and more important. This isn't going away. I think this is the future of bad guys making money is going to be about ransomware and about, about you know, coming up with ways of basically getting people to give them things like passwords and logins and bank account information and wiring money. And I don't see insurance companies insuring people from being stupid. You know, I don't see it. If, if you voluntarily wire someone money, why should the insurance company pay it? It's not a stupidity insurance policy or a sucker insurance policy. They didn't steal it from you, you gave it to them. You literally wired the money to them. So I just think it's a very real issue, it's a very real opportunity, and now's the time to fix it, uh, both for money perspective as well as uh, responsibility perspective. Cool, thank you very much, man, I appreciate it. All right. That is our last session of the day for the Luminary, so we appreciate their, uh, their input and, and support, and uh, definitely recommend you looking them up over the next few days, uh, picking their brain, buying them a beer, uh, good people that uh, try to help people. And, and don't leave Terry Rossi alone either. He is one that just didn't come up here.